David Lynch's body of work shapes him as one of the strangest and most influential film directors. A great believer in discovering ideas through transcendental meditation, he has the ability to communicate ideas through various elements of form, music and visuals, making the meaning of his films always about discovery and never surface level. Stanley Kubrick was also a believer in using cinema this way. The opening moments of the film tell us everything we need to know about the film's themes. The colour blue represents secrets. By opening the curtains of the opening image, it lets us know that we will be allowed into a world full of intimate personal details. This is then supported by a series of shots, giving us the impression of a typical happy town with iconic images, and then telling us with visual information and great sound design that despite the image that is first seen, dark creatures lurk beneath the surface, and will be explored throughout the film. Along with the repeated colour blue signalling secrets across Lynch's films, the use of a dog is a major turning point in his films. A dog's presence can be seen when Anthony Hopkins first approaches the Elephant Man, and when Nicolas Cage's character meets a troublesome character in Wild at Heart. In this instance, the dog approaches Jeffrey's father. It is a signal to the audience that this event is life-changing, and will set all other events into motion. Most of the visual references that are mentioned will apply to all of Lynch's films, as he uses these elements often to get across meaning and emotion. The world that's presented to us in Blue Velvet follows one of Lynch's most commonly used themes, the idea of duality. The small town is literally split in half by Lincoln Avenue. This street splits the dark, dingy, crime-filled streets of the town with the lighter side full of trees and children and schools. Everything in the film has a mirrored opposite. Even the cheery diner in the darker side of town is represented by the dark, smoky bar where Dorothy sings. Even characters have opposites. Sandy wears pinks and whites and has angelic blonde hair, having relatively normal relationships. She is mirrored in the form of Dorothy, who dresses in blacks and blues and is forced to engage in harmful relationships. Both fathers are emasculated in the film. Also, Dorothy's husband is humiliated and killed. This could be making a statement about weakness in father figures. Also a theme through Lynch's work, especially in the 1970 short film, The Grandmother. Sandy's father, who is the best of the good cops, also was mirrored by the yellow man, fulfilling similar roles on different sides of the town, but ironically they are led to each other because they are partners. This is only discovered near the end of the film, when the two worlds begin to merge and reveal similarities. The reason for this theme is related directly to Jeffrey. The misdirection at the beginning of the film allows us to think that Jeffrey is innocent and curious, but as the film continues we notice how disturbingly close he is to Frank's character. Although returning to the small town because of his father, Jeffrey is not from the lighter side of town, and as the story unfolds his actions don't represent that side. We see him getting closer and closer to the thoughts, actions and relationships that Frank would have. The major turning point where Frank and Jeffrey begin to align is when Jeffrey gives in and finally beats Dorothy the way that Frank would. They begin to share the way in which they treat Dorothy. Frank uses her to feel power and control, and Jeffrey uses her to focus his mystery and secret thrill. During the joy ride that brings Frank and Jeffrey together, we can see that Jeffrey is dressed in black and white, representing his double life. Shortly after that, Frank calls out, You're like me. In Lynch's films, the painting of faces is to give a grotesque and frightening effect. We can see this on Ben's character, Frank's cohort, as he sings in dreams. A candy-colored clown they call the Sandman Tiptoes to my room And this song is heard again when Frank covers himself in lipstick to achieve the same effect. Then I drift away. Meaning here can be found when he covers Jeffrey in the same lipstick, all to make the point on revealing Jeffrey's true nature. Blue is used to represent secrets in the film. Here are a few examples that reinforce Jeffrey taking on a double life and secret persona. Like the face painting and the use of dogs, which is common in Lynch's work to get across similar meanings, the use of electricity is usually linked with murder. When the dead body is found, we can hear an electric drum in the background as a noticeable presence. 
This can be seen again when Frank is killed and the light bulb frazzles. Other examples of this can be seen in Mulholland Drive. The visual theme that is repeated through the film and all Lynch's work is the use of fire to represent a wild and uncontrollable force, probably used most in Wild at Heart. The image is seen in blue velvet in the form of a candle, but the timing of these images adds meaning to Link Frank and Jeffrey's characters. The image is seen during forceful and intimate moments with Dorothy for Frank, but when Jeffrey finally decides to beat her, we are presented with the same image, connecting the two through visual language. Although not as blatant as Wild at Heart, the presence of a Wizard of Oz theme can be noted at several points. Dorothy, as a character, mirrors that of Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Both are removed from their worlds and wish to return. Our Blue Velvet Dorothy is a more twisted version, and at one point even wears the iconic red shoes. The final motif used here is the screen being blown out to a white, often representing heaven or the presence of heavenly forces. This is seen near the end of the film where Jeffrey reaches Sandy, possibly giving us the meaning that despite the terrible events of the film, love can conquer over evil. This message is reinforced with the closing image of a robin, which has been referred to as love eating a worm, which was used at the beginning of a film to represent the darker and more horrible things lurking below the surface, telling us again that love can triumph over the darkness. Blue Velvet is a happy medium between his more traditional films like Elephant Man and The Straight Story and his more Lynchian work in Mulholland Drive. Despite the subjective interpretations of his films, they are so cinematic in nature that they always delve into our thinking, and whether they are your type of film or not, they are so memorable that you can't help but be affected in some way. So what's your favourite David Lynch film? Comment below and let me know. I close my eyes.